Hello and welcome to the SAM Projects 2013 video for Excel number four. Let's go to the SAM website. Log in with your student account and find the project in question. So go to the activity list view. Make sure always available is unselected and that projects is selected. Find the Excel four link get five attempts. There's two files that we need, the instruction file. I will open the instruction file here. I will select enable editing so that I can see the ribbon and edit this in the more, view this in the more normal view. And in this case, we are doing uh, some recycling data and we are going to finish up a report, add some data to report, and then create some charts to view this data visually. So this is a very nice visual project. Our start file is SC Excel 2013 CS P1A, first last name underscore one, and we're going to save that as underscore two and verify our name appears in cell B6. So let's go back and do those things, get our start file. We'll open up our start file. I will do enable editing so I can do a save as on this start file, give it a new name, file, save as. Save it on my computer, on my desktop is where I like to save my files. Change the underscore one to be an underscore two, and also remove the copy of at the beginning if you happen to have a copy of. And there's my file that we're working on. And sure enough, in the documentation tab in cell B6, I do see my name, Big Red, in this case, your student name in your case. So we're going to go through these files and we're going to upload our work when we're done. Okay. So we've got this file, we've got the Word file for our instructions. Let's go through and complete this project together. First thing, step one, let's change the workbook theme to integral. Now, a workbook theme allows you to do the rows and colors and, and uh, uh, tabs together, uh, rows and fonts and colors together. In the third tab here, the page layout tab, the leftmost option is our themes. And we can see that themes include colors, fonts, and effects. When I select a theme for the entire workbook, all of the colors, fonts, and effects uh, work together in a consistent theme. In this case, we're going to do the third theme, integral. And now the colors, fonts, and effects for this worksheet, for this entire workbook, are uh, consistent. And we'll see that in some of these other things. So it's kind of a, a bluish, uh, an ocean blue, and a light green seems to be the kind of theme that we're working with in our data. And we'll see more about that as we go through it. Step two. In step two, we want to uh, open the statistics worksheet, modify the column widths and row heights as described. There's a third step C down there. Uh, we're going to use best fit for column A. We want to change the row height and row 1 to be a specific value 48 and we want to change B through M to be a specific 10 character width. So let's do this. So the uh, statistics worksheet is right here. Statistics worksheet. Column A I want to resize to be best fit. So it's not a specific value of this size or this size or this size. It's best fit. And the way you do best fit is you click on the right part of the column, right where it switches from column A to column B, right there in the middle of those. You double click there and it'll resize the column to best fit. In this case uh, it happens to be cell 21 is the widest cell contents and it fits it so that it shows up without any wasted space. So that's part A using best fit. Part B says row height, row 1 to be exactly 48 characters. So let me come up here to row 1 here. I want to make this exactly 48 characters. Now I have two ways of doing this. One way is I can click it and manually drag it and it's showing me the height as I'm manually dragging it. I can manually make that exactly 48. If I can do it, it's a little tricky to do exactly, but I get it to be exactly 48. The other way is to right click and specify row height and just type 48 in directly. And you can see that I got it correct on the manual. I could have just done the right click row height entry. And I have the same thing option when it comes to columns B through M. I can highlight all four of those, I mean all of those uh, uh, columns B through M now, they don't all fit on the screen right now for me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see all of those at once. B through M. I can see all those at once. And I could manually resize them, make them bigger or smaller. 
uh, as we were doing before, or I could right click and say column width and make it exactly the value 10, doing it with the edit window. And now that they all fit, I can zoom back in to uh, 100% and they all fit on the screen for my current resolution. Depending on your screen resolution, they may or may not all fit on the screen at once. Step three, in cell A1, uh, apply the formatting options described below. Change the font to Arial black font and font size of 24 points. Let's do A first. Uh, in cell A1, we want to do in the home tab, we want to do Arial black font and 24 point. Uh, letter B, change the font color to turquoise, accent 3, darker 50%. Now, accent 3 happens to be turquoise for the, uh, the selected theme that we have. Uh, in a different theme, accent 3 might not be turquoise. But you should see turquoise as your accent 3 for your font color. So font color is the one that has in the font group has the letter A. So hover over it and you see it says font color. And I want to do turquoise accent three. Now the way the theme colors work, just a reminder, the first one is background, the second one is text one, and then the next two are background two and text two. And then the last six are accent one, accent two, all the way through accent six. The specific value for accent six, in this case teal, or accent three, in this case turquoise, are going to change depending on the theme that you had selected. So if you see accent three and it doesn't say turquoise, then you need to go back and redo your uh, step one where you specify the theme for the workbook. And uh, it's not just accent three, it's accent three darker 50%. So accent three, and then it starts with a few lighter ones, and then you have two darker ones, and the last one is darker 50%. And then I also want to do the fill color, the last part of step three, to be accent three lighter 80%. The fill color is the paint can, and I want to do accent three, which is uh, the third of the last six, and the very first of those accents is lighter 80%. FIR Recycling Fur is the name of the company, so that's not a typo. That is uh, a proper noun, and you can use whatever names you want to on your proper nouns. It happens to be called Fur Recycling. Step four, merge and center the contents of A2M2, then apply the Heading 2 cell style, and then format with a long date number format. So A2F2. Oh, A2M2, sorry. A2M2, merge and center. That's the first part. Heading to cell style. So cell styles are over here. And heading to is right there. And then uh, format the merge cells with the long date number format. So again, I have the A2M2 selected. And I come up here into my format option, my number format. And the long date is the sixth one from the top there and it's showing the date in long date format. Now, this happens to be uh, Wednesday, December 26th, which should be what you see as well. This is not a today function, that's a hard-coded value. So you should see the same date there on your long date. Number five, enter the contents in bold shown in the table below. So C4F5 should enter the following data. C4 is right here. And I want to enter the following data. Bottles slash cans, B-O-T-T-L-E-S, cans. And then D4, I want to enter plastics. D4 is to the right here, plastics. Now I'm going to hit a tab instead of an enter. Tab moves me to the right of the cell I just entered. Enter takes me down. And this way, uh, because I know I'm doing, I can see I'm doing C4, D4, E4, mixed paper, I'm going to tab to go to the right to go to F4, which is glass. Now I'm going to press enter, and it takes me um, down and to the left. C5 is a 25, 80, 50, and 15. Okay. So this is the bin, not a single bottle, but a bin of bottles or cans 
will bring in $25 and a bin of plastics will bring in $80 for recycling purposes. Step six, format the cells in the range C5F5 with the currency number format two decimal places. C5F5, C5F5, currency, and confirm it has two decimal places and it does. Step seven, apply the following format and options as described below. So bold and center the content cell B4, B4, bold and center. Use Format Painter to apply the formatting in B4 to C4, F4. So Format Painter, I select B4, click on the paintbrush as the Format Painter, and I copy that to C4, F4. Merge and center the contents of B4 and B5. Actually, it just says to merge, not merge and center. So B4, B5, it's already centered. But the instructions say just to merge, not merge and center. So I'm going to click on the arrow to the right of this merge and center, and I'm just going to select merge. Now, technically, it's already centered. So I think if I selected merge and center, it'd be the same thing. But I'm just following the directions literally there. And apply the all borders border style to B4, F5. So here's B4 to F5, that range. I want to apply the uh, all borders option. Step eight, move the content of cell E6 to cell E7, and then apply the formatting options described below. So move E6 to E7, let me do that first. Here's E6, and we'll move it down to E7. And then I'm going to merge and center E7, G7, merge and center E7, G7. And then I'm going to apply the fill color blue accent to lighter 60% to the merge cells. Accent to lighter 60 as the fill color. So here's fill color. Accent to lighter 60% is right there. Step nine, use the January label in cell B8 and fill C8 to M8 for the months of the year. Now it's going to Excel is going to be smart here. It sees January, and when I use the fill handle, which is the lower right hand element, and I drag this, it's smart enough to know that January becomes February, becomes March, all the way through December as the twelfth option there, and it's filling those in for me. Excel's very nice that way. In cell B13, use the sum function to total the values in B9 to B12 and then use the fill handle to copy B13 across C to M13. So B13 sum function, B13 sum functions, again, begin with an equal sign, name of the function, and then you have to have arguments, left parenthesis, and I'm adding up this B9 to B12, that's my range. And now that I have the sum of those, I want to use the fill handle and copy that all the way across to the M13. Step 11, okay, now we're going to do something called a goal seek. Perform a goal seek analysis to determine the number of bins in the plastic containers, B10, the value in B10 that's necessary to make the sum in B13 equal 100. B10 is the value we're going to change. Now what they're telling us is we're going to use a function called goal seek analysis to say what do I have to change, what value does this have to become so that this value is 100. Now this is pretty easy math, and you could probably do it in your head, but the cool thing about goal seek is it could be a very complicated formula, a very complicated spreadsheet with very complicated formulas and functions, and it'll still do the tricky math necessary to let us do this. Okay, so how do we do this goal seek? I want to change B10 so that B13 has a specific fixed value here. So let me see, I'm going to select the value I'm going to change, B10, and then I'm going to do my goal seek. And goal seek is here in data. Inside the data tab, there's some data tools, and inside the data tools are something called what if analysis, and there's a goal seek dot 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 option. Anytime you see the little dot 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 option inside of a menu or tab option, it tells you that when you select it, it doesn't immediately do something, but it pulls up a dialog box requiring more information. So I want to set cell, um, actually, I don't want B10 to be my, uh, I want B13 to be the cell that I set. 
B13 is the cell that I'm setting. I want B13 to become 100 by changing B10. So I could type those values in manually or I could click on them as I was doing there, but B13 becomes 100 by changing B10. Now it does its little math there in the background. You saw it changing on the screen if you were watching. And the end result is that my target cell, B13, has the value I desired it to have, 100, and B10 changed along the way. Okay. And that's a simple example of a very powerful feature, goal seek analysis. Step 12. In cell B14, use the keyboard to enter a formula that multiplies the values in B9, the number of returnable bottles or bins of returnable bottles, times the value in C5, how much each bin of returnable bottles, returnable bottles is worth, and then use an absolute cell reference to C5 and relative to B9 so that you can copy the formula across all the other 12 months. So B14 gets the formula of uh, the revenue for bottles and cans for January is the returnables of bottles and cans for January times the price per bin of bottles and cans for January. So $1,000 worth of bottles and cans being returned because we did 40 bins of bottles and cans, not individual bottles and cans, but big, you know, big stack bins of them at $25, the bin price. Now, I want to do a copy of this formula, and you'll notice that right now uh, the C5 is a relative reference. It doesn't have the absolute reference as the dollar sign. I'm going to put the dollar signs in on the C5. What that gives me is the C5 is now fixed. So as I grab the fill handle and drag it across, the C5 copies over with it. So the C5 is being fixed in all these examples. The, uh, the column is changing for the first argument in the multiplication, but the second argument is always C5. Okay, so we did that for uh, B14. Step 13 is to do the same thing for plastics, mixed paper, and glass, doing the exact same uh, formula copying that we did. In other words, I take January plastics times the per plastics price, and before I copy it, I make this an absolute reference, and then I can copy it across. Mixed paper is the January mixed paper times the mixed paper price. I want to make that mixed paper price an absolute reference, and then copy it across. January glass times the glass bin recycle price. Before I copy, I make this an absolute reference, and then I copy it across. Step 14. Format the values in the range B9M13 with a comma style number format. Uh, decrease the number of decimal places to 1 for the comma style, and then format B14M14 with a counting two decimal places. So let's do this first part. Uh, B9M13, let's do that one first, B9M13, so that range there gets the comma style. So back in the home group, we're talking about styles. And even though it's under cell style, uh, it's a number format under this cell style. It's a little confusing with our wording there, but in the cell styles, there is this group at the bottom called number formats, and there's a comma number format there. And right now it has two decimal places. The instructions say one decimal place. So I'm going to, while it's still highlighted, I'm going to decrease the number of decimals. And now there's one decimal place for that range. The second part is to select B14M14, B14M18, and use a counting style. So B14 to M18, and use the accounting style and confirm that it has two decimal places, and it does two decimal places. Step number 15. Apply a new conditional formatting rule for the range B18M18. This conditional formatting rule is going to highlight cells that are greater than $4,000 using a standard green fill color and a standard dark blue font color. 
So we're going to do a conditional formatting on the range B18, M18. B18, M18. So I'm highlighting that range B18, M18 to do a conditional formatting rule. In the Home tab, conditional formatting is right here in the Styles group. And as I come down to this uh, option, I have some different options here. I want to do Highlight Rules Greater Than because I want to highlight all the cells in the selected cell range that are greater than $4,000. So I can type in just $4,000. I can type it in with a dollar and the comma sign. It's smart enough to figure it out either way. And then I get to figure out my highlight. Now, there's some, there's three or four pre-built in ones and a, a couple other pre-built ones. But I want to do a custom format. Because I want to do the formatting with standard light green fill color and standard dark blue font color. So fill color is here in the fill tab and I can specify uh, standard light green which is right here the fifth option confirm that's right the fifth column in the standards palette so not up here in the uh, theme palette but in the standard palette one two three four five the fifth one here is light fill color now I'm not, I'm not getting the hint for some reason but I can see that it's the one between the yellow and the dark green is the light green and then it says to use standard dark blue font color which again is the ninth one in the standard colors palette now this is the font color so i go to the font tab and I specify color here and then i want to do the dark blue now for whatever reason this one does give me the hints and i can see that the next to last or the ninth one is dark blue so i select dark blue so i've got a custom format for all the cells greater than four thousand now as i go back to my worksheet what I see is that whenever the value is greater than 4,000 in the selected range, that I get the uh, light green black uh, background color and the dark blue uh, font color. So it's a nice way of drawing attention to those cells. In cell B21, use the average function to calculate the monthly average for the range B14 to B17, then copy the formula across C through M. So in B21, use the average function equals average. And I'm averaging the range B14 to B17, B14 to B17. You can see that the average there is B14 to B17. Now I want to copy that B21 across C to M21. Now there's no need for a fixed reference here, uh, an absolute reference here, so I can just copy it without worrying about adding any dollar signs. Because as I copy these, I want them to all, all the values move with as it moves across the columns there. Step 17, step 18, say use the max and the min functions to do the same thing. So I'm going to do these, the max of that range, and the min function of that same range. Right, B14 to B17, copy that across. And then step 19. Step 19 says, in cell B24, use the if function to check whether the value in cell B21 is greater than 1,000. If the value is greater than 1,000, then the return value should be good. And you do this by typing good inside of double quotes. If the condition is false, then the return value should be poor, and we type poor inside of double quotes. So in cell B21, we're doing an if function. So in cell B21, we're doing an if function equals if, left parenthesis, the condition, the first argument, is B21 greater than 1,000. B21 greater than 1,000, comma. If B21 is greater than 1,000, then the true value is good is that right yes good otherwise poor and then right parenthesis to close the argument copy this value formula in b24 across c to m24 and i'll copy this c to m24 now what this is telling us is that if uh this value here the average uh, uh revenue per month if it's greater than a thousand we say good but in months like february in March, 
where the average is less than a thousand it says poor so it says good like August and poor like September based on that average value being greater than a thousand or less than a thousand okay step number 20 in cell B26 create a column spark line from the data H12 to J12 and then change the style the spark lines to a specific style from the style gallery so let's do this in cell b26 create a column spark line so b26 is right here I want to create a column spark line now the spark lines are in our data no 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 no, no. I'm sorry it's in the insert option so the insert tab has spark lines and there are line spark lines and there are column spark lines Right, and that's really what we're interested in is a column spark line. So I click column spark line and it's saying, okay, where do you want the data to be that's going to appear in the uh, spark line that appears in B26? And the range for my data, going back to my instructions, oops, I can't get back to them here. Let me, sorry. H12 to J12. Okay, so H12 to J12. J12 or what we're doing in our spark line and what that's showing us is a visual representation of those three months uh, quarter three H I and J um, and we can see that August was the larger of those and September was by far the smaller of those so it's a visual a simple way to get some visual uh, element into our chart uh, into our graph uh, even better is to actually do some charts here which we're getting ready to do some pie charts and so forth but before we do that we want to uh, correct any spelling errors so check the spelling in the workbook and identify and correct any spelling errors there are at least two spelling errors so I'm going to uh, come over here and say uh, review and spelling and it doesn't find anything for whatever cell I currently have selected do you want to go ahead and check the whole sheet yes I want to check the whole sheet and it's going to find at least two so first of all I've got re retunnable and I think I want that to be returnable instead of retunnable so I do want returnable I'll change that and I've got a v r a g average and I want that to be average so I'll change that and sure enough it fixed two it found and fixed two typos there and then the last thing I want to do is I want to format my worksheet to go through a series of uh, printing options so it's going to show up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change the orientation to landscape. Okay. So on our page layout tab, we can specify how these things are going to look when they're printed. So I want it to print in landscape orientation. I want it to have narrow margins. So my margins can be narrow. I want to have a um, header on this printout. Now, the pr headers only show when you print out. I won't see it in the workbook. But when I print out, I want this header to appear, Island Recycling 2016 Statistics. And normally I type these things out, but I'm going to go ahead and copy-paste this just so I get it right because I'm going to forget exactly what it is as I'm searching for this header. So I want to go to the... Uh, the center section of the header so where do I get the headers at in my page layout the page setup there's not a section here for headers so I need to come to the uh, lower right hand corner and pop up the page setup window so this page setup dialog box pulls up and here I have page and margins and headers and sheet and in the headers group I can specify where my header is. Now, I want to go into even more detail because the header is actually broken, in, broken down to the left, center, and right header. And to get to that point, I have to click on Custom Header. And I can specify the left, the center, or the right part of the header. So with the cursor in the Custom Header Center section, I can do my paste of my Island Recycling 2016 statistics. And I could have just typed that in if I could remember it, but I couldn't remember it. Okay. So I've done that header, and then uh, part D, set the print area to be C26, M26. The print area is over here in the, uh, it's in the sheet tab. So I'm still in the same page setup window. The sheet tab on the far right, I can specify the print area 
to be C26, M26, C26, M26. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to scale the worksheet so that it prints on one page. And that's over here in the page tab. I can specify the fit to one page by one page. Okay, so now when I print this to a printer, all those things that we just specified uh, will show up. Step 23. Create a 3D pie chart for the non-adjacent data B8M8 and B18M18. Pie charts require two ranges, a range for the data and a range for the labels. So that's what these two ranges are. And the way we select the non-adjacent range is you select the first range, B8M8, and then you press the control key and select B18M18. Notice how I selected these inside Word, non-adjacent selections, multiple selections. I want to do the exact same thing. You should be able to do this in your Word document uh, by pressing, selecting one and then holding the control key down and selecting the next range. If you want to do multiple selects on the same sheet, you do this by pressing and holding the control key as you're selecting. So you can see here in Word, I have multiple things selected. I want to do the same thing in Excel. B8, M8, B18, M18. So B8, M8. So that's my labels, January to uh, December, my labels. And B18, so hold down the Control key and press uh, B18 to M18. And I get that data that's going to be the, uh, the size of the pie slices. And what we're inserting here is a 3D pie chart. So in the Insert tab, we want to come over and do a 3D pie chart. Now, that might be in the recommended charts, but I can see pie charts are right here. So I'm going to select on this. And my list of pie charts includes 2D, 3D, and a donut chart. I want to do the 3D pie chart. That's what we're instructed to do. And there is my 3D pie chart. That would not be much fun to draw by hand, but it's very nice to let Excel create that pie chart for us automatically. Um, where are we at here? Use the, uh, uh, move the chart to its own chart sheet and then revenue by month chart as the name of the chart sheet. So I want to move it to a new sheet, revenue by month chart. So here's my chart sheet. Uh, in the chart tool design tab, there at the far right, there is something called move chart. And I want to move it to a new sheet, and I want to name this sheet Revenue by Month Chart. Revenue by Month Chart. And the B is lowercase. I don't think it would take off for using an uppercase, but I'm going to follow the directions as close as possible. Revenue by Month Chart. So now I've added a new worksheet, and it's actually called a chart sheet. When the sheet doesn't contain data, it's just uh, graphics it's called technically a chart sheet so I have worksheets and chart sheets both in the collection which is called a workbook so just for our terminology there so I have a new chart sheet step 24 format the 3d pie chart with the following options we want to change the chart title so here's my chart title up here. It's got a generic default chart title. I want to change this to be revenue by month. Revenue by month. I want to change the chart style to be uh, chart style 6. So while I have this chart selected, I can see that in the design group, I have a list of chart styles to choose from. And they're just labeled chart style 1, style 2. Uh, style 6 is obviously the sixth style in that list and I select that style and I can see on screen I actually do kind of like that style it's got the little white lines between the pie slices and it looks pretty good uh, add data labels using the data callout positioning option there's a couple ways we can do this um, the easiest way is to come over here and select the little plus icon in the upper right hand corner and the plus icon gives us some of the most common things that are added and removed from charts. Do you have a title or not? Do you have data labels? Do you have a legend? And if I come under data labels, um, there's a generic data labels. There's a little arrow to the right, which gives us 
even other option on data labels and data callout is what we're instructed to do. We're instructed to do the data callout version of the data labels. And on the graphic on the left, I can see the way the callout works is that the percentages, they're not overlying the pie chart slices, but they're actually outside it with arrows pointing to each individual slice. It's actually a nice looking way of doing the data there. And then the last thing we want to do is remove the legend from the chart. And again, I can do that by using the plus in the upper right hand corner of the chart and just coming down here and unchecking the legend and the legend goes away. I don't need the legend because the labels, the months and the percentages are included in the dropouts that we have, the callouts that we have associated with those. Step 25, switch back to statistics and then use a recommended chart to create a cluster column chart, clustered, clustered column chart for the range A8 to D12. So let's do that. Let's go back to statistics. The range is A8 to D12, A8 to D12. And I can see that I've got the uh, January, February, and March. I'm just doing three months worth of data or the first quarter data for my uh, recycling numbers. And I want to use the recommended chart option to do a clustered, clustered column chart. So insert tab. There's the recommended charts. And on recommended charts, you know, some of the clustered bar is the first option, stacked bar, stacked area, line, and then that fifth one is clustered column, which is our uh, instructions are to use. So I say OK on the clustered column chart. And there it is. Uh, instructions say to move the chart to its own chart sheet and name the chart sheet quarter one chart. So again, we're going to select move the chart, which is at the far right of the design tab. We're going to move it to a new, che new sheet, and the new sheet is chart, uh, quarter one chart. Quarter one chart. So now I have a quarter one chart chart sheet in my workbook. Format the clustered column chart with the following options. First of all, change the chart title to be bins collected in quarter one. Bins collected in quarter one. Uh, add number of bins as the primary vertical axis title. Now horizontal is left and right like the horizon and vertical is up and down. And I want to add a vertical axis title. There is no title here. It just has the numbers 5, 10, 15, 20 without a title. So the way to add that is to uh, come over here to the chart elements. In the chart tools option, in the design tab, the leftmost choice is the chart element, uh, add chart element. And we can see a lot of the things that we can customize and modify on our chart are all summarized here. And I want to do chart titles. I'm sorry, I want to do axis titles, and I want to do the vertical. And when I select this, it adds a generic axis title as my vertical axis title. Uh, number of bins is what I want it to say, so I will double click here and change that to be number of bins. It's hard to read at that small font, but I can see it on my screen that I got it correct. And then I want to add a primary horizontal, like the horizon left to right, of months in quarter one, and I'll do it the same way. Select the chart in the design tab in the leftmost group here. I want to do an axis title for the horizontal axis title. The generic axis title is deleted and replaced with months in quarter one. Months in quarter one. Very good. Step 27. Step 27 says, Go to uh, Volunteer Educators Worksheet and make the following formatting changes. So let's do this. Volunteer Educators Worksheet. Let's step through these changes. A. Rotate the labels in B3, B14 to be 45 degrees. B3, B14, make these 45 degrees. Now I think 45 degrees is this orientation if I just do counterclockwise, but it doesn't. I don't know that for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the uh, alignment bottom right tab, pull up the alignment and settings or format cells dialog, and here 
I can specify for the highlighted cells because I already have A3, A4, uh, B3, B14 highlighted. I can specify exactly how many degrees I want it to be, 45 degrees. Then I know that those are 45 degrees rather than just uh, guessing that those are 45 degrees. Part B, use the entries in A3, A4 to fill the range A5 to A14. So A3, A4 already has one, two. I'm going to drag that down to and get uh, the values and Excel will figure out the context 1, 2 becomes 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 through 12. Copy C3, C5 and then paste it into C6, C8 and C12, C14. Use the paste option that pastes values not formatting. So copy C3, C5 I'm going to do a copy on that and here's my uh, copy options. And I want to paste it into C6, C8, but I don't want to get the formatting. I want the values only. So in my paste option, if I click on the arrow below the paste uh, area, I get a list of choices here. And one of these options is to paste values, values with formatting and values with source form. I want to do just values because that's what the instructions say. And then the same thing for C12, C14, paste just the values. And then part D of step 27 says to remove the, remove the fill color on C3, C5. So let me go back up here to C3, C5. And on fill color, which is the paint can, I want to do remove or no fill. Selecting the no fill option near the bottom will, uh, it's not filling with white. It's actually, uh, there's not any fill value at all associated with that, which is different than using the white fill color. Step 28, in the Recycling Company's worksheet, select B3 and use the Freeze Pane option to freeze the rows and columns to the left and above B3. Then zoom out to 60%. Okay, so in the Recycling Company's worksheet, which is right here, and right now as I look at this, I can't see A and B, they're off the screen. So let me scroll over to the left there. So now I can see A and B and C and so on. Uh, I want to put the cursor in cell B3 and then do a freeze. So I put the cursor in cell B3 and then I want to do a freeze paint. So that's in the view tab, I believe. In the view tab, in the uh, windows group here, there is a freeze paint options. And if I select the first one of these, the freeze panes, it'll freeze all the rows above and all the columns to the left of the selected cell. Now what that means is as I scroll to the right, a stays visible. So B, C, D, C, they're, they're disappearing. And as I scroll down, uh, one and two stay visible, but the others disappear. And that's a nice way when you have lots of data to keep uh, rows and columns visible as you look through your data. And that's very helpful when the rows and columns, like they do in this case, have some uh, descriptive labels that tell you what it is we're looking at. The second part of this step says to change the zoom effect to be 60%. So I want to zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to zoom out by clicking on the minus arrow and setting this to 60%. I think I also could click on this and just manually type in a value, but I like just using the plus and minus in most cases. So now I've got a 60% zoom and I've got my um, uh, freeze panes applied there. Last step, select statistics, recycling companies, and volunteer educators worksheets. So all three of those worksheets are going to be selected and then we're going to apply the turquoise accent three uh, sheet tab color. So let's select statistics, recycling companies, and volunteer educators. So statistics, uh, I have to press the control key, recycling and volunteer educators. So I've got all three of those tabs selected at the same time by using the control key as I select the second and third ones. And then I want to specify a color for this, a tab color. So I select tab color and it wants to use the uh, highlight three, I think it was, turquoise. One, two, three. Turquoise accent three. Let me make sure that's what it said. Yes, turquoise accent three. Okay. So now, uh, if I'm on a tab that's not one of those three tabs, I can see that it's got that background color. If I happen to pick one of those tabs, um, 
it's hard to tell, but but they've got all three of those has the background color that it really stands out when they're not the selected tab. Okay, so I think we're in very good shape here. Should look like the figures below. So just glancing through this, uh, yes, the revenue by month. That's what I remember ours looking like. Uh, yes, I remember the uh, quarter one chart sheet looking like that. Bins collected in quarter one. If we typed everything in correctly. Uh, our first sheet, yes, the statistic sheet looks like I see the uh, highlighted uh, uh, cells there. We did the custom formatting. Uh, everything looks about right. So there's nothing here that I'm looking at that looks unusual. I see the 45 degree option that we specified there. So I think we're in good shape. And there we have the 60% focus and the frozen tabs, uh, the, the free set. Okay, so I think we're very good here. I'm going to save this. I'm going to close this and close the instructions as well and then I'm going to upload the file for grading um, SCCSP1A SCCSP1A there it is submit this file for grading hopefully get three check marks three check marks that's very good let's go under our reports and see how we did for Excel 4 looking at the Excel 4 work pulling up the results 98 out of 100. What did we miss here? I did something not right. Uh, Sparklines in cell B26 should use Sparkline Style 3. Oh, on well, my Sparklines, I forgot to set the Style 3. Okay, so let's go back to the file that we just had. Let's open that back up. And let's make that edit real quick. So here's my spark line, and sure enough, when I did my spark line, I was supposed to set style three from my instructions document. So let's make this change. Uh, well, let me see this here. So in the spark lines group here, if I click on the uh, arrow there to show all the spark line styles, it was over three, down three, spark line style, accent three, left print C, no dark or light, close print C. Yep, forgot about that. That just changes the style. It's not a huge change, but it's a change in the instructions that we're supposed to follow, and I didn't follow there. Let me save that, close, and we'll submit again. Let's go back here and submit uh, once more time here. Excel 4, submit the file. Get three check marks. And now let's look at our report. And hopefully our report is 100 this time. And it's 100 out of 100. All right, thank you. Have a very good day.